Hello again, my name's Johnny, welcome back. This is the fourth and actually the last tutorial in our core uh, series and I'm going to be showing you how to use various different morphing animation effects to bring your scribe to life. I'll also be showing you how to use different hands for drawing and for move-ins and also how you can change the background. So we'll start off with morphing. So with morphing you need to start off with an initial image and then VideoScribe will move the lines from that image across to a second image. The second image could be a copy of the first, in which case you can produce various movement effects, or it could be a completely different image, in which case you'll get more of a transformation. So I'll show you how you can do some of that. So we're gonna go back to the scribe that Joe and I have been working on, and I've come down to this scene. This is the second scene with the mug and the Superman. So I'm gonna start off by animating the mug here. Um, and just to give myself a little bit of space so I can show you a couple of things, I'm gonna take these bits of text and move them out of the way, just for now. So. With the mug, I need to have a second mug to morph to, so I'm going to copy and paste the mug. So now I've got two copies of the mug, and I'm going to take the second one across the screen here. So with the first mug, I still want that to draw as normal, but what I'm going to do is go in and change that from full colour to outline, because remember uh, that um, morph, what morphing does is it takes the lines across, so it works much better with outline. With the second mug, I'm going to go into properties here and I'm going to change the animate effect across to morph. And now what I need to do is say which uh, image I'm going to morph from. So here are the images that are, exist already in the timeline up until this point. Obviously we can't choose uh, a, 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 an image which is in the future. So I'm going to choose the mug here and it gives me the option here to clear the item at the end. So if I uncheck this, it would leave a copy behind. So in this case, I don't want to do that. Uh, and the animate time here now is going to be the time it takes to complete that move. So let's say I want to do that in one second. And I can show you that just by previewing from here. So we draw the first mug and then it moves across the screen. Okay, so I'll just stop there. So what I want to do now is I can show you how you can chain different uh, move of, uh, movements like that to make more complicated movements. So I'm going to go to the second mug and what I'm going to do is copy it a second time, so I have a third mug. And with this one, I'm actually going to take it off the screen. So I've now got three mugs. They've all got the same camera position. I know that because we started with the first mug where we set the camera position for that, and I've copied it. So I've got three mugs, but one of them is effectively off camera. So it's worth remembering that you don't have to have all your uh, elements inside the camera view when they appear. You can have things appearing off camera if you want to. So to make this one work, I'm going to go into the second one and go into the properties. So again, I'm going to change this to outline. And I don't want to put it to pause at all at this stage. So I'm going to take all of these times, the pause times down. So I still want it to take a second to get across here, but I'm not going to pause. And then for the third mug, I need to go into morph and make sure I morph, in this case, from the second mug. Uh, and maybe I'm going to make this one take a little bit longer. So if I show you that effect, you can see how we can get the mug to move, and then in this case it just moves off the screen. So that's one way you can get items to move out of the screen area. Okay, so in this case I don't actually want to have the mug moving around. What I'm going to do is take the second mug and put it back over the first one, and I'm actually going to delete the third one. So what I actually want to do is show you how you can do rotation effects. So I'm going to actually go and grab this text and bring it back in. So with the second mug now, I'm going to change it back into full colour. Um, and I'm going to, this time, rotate it. So I'm going to use these rotation buttons here so that I can get it to be exactly minus 90. So it's going to tip over and rotate by 90 degrees. And that, I want that, this time, to take just half a second. So if I show you that effect now, you can see we can get, have a rotating effect. Now, as my daughter pointed out to me, in this case, you don't actually want to have a rotation. You want more of a tip effect. So she advised me I needed to move the mug to here. And if we play it now, you'll see you get a much better tipping effect. So that was a good suggestion. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this text into this position here. Now then, the next effect I want to show you is how you can use Morph again, and this time to make things expand and grow, and you can make things appear or disappear in this way. So we're going to do this over with the Superman image. 
Um, so again, what I need to do is I need to copy and paste this. So I've now got two versions of this. Okay, and I want to move the top one out of the way. So with the first one, what I'm going to do with this is go into the properties and I, I want this to be outline again. And this is still blue like, like Joe left it before, but I quite like that, so I think I'll leave that. Um, but I don't want this one to draw at all, I just want it to appear. So I'm going to take all these times down to zero. And then with this one, I'm going to move it up. So I want this effect to be as if the Superman's appearing out of the, uh, the logo. So I'm going to take it up there and I'm going to reduce it right down so it's really small. Then with the second one, I'm going to just bring that, this back. I'll make it a little bigger, bit bigger, I think. And I'll go into the options here. And again, I'm going to choose Morph. And this time I want to morph from this original Superman. And I'm going to make this take, let's say, a second and a half. OK, so if I show you that effect, you can see we have this kind of growing, expanding, appearing effect. Um, what we can also do, in fact, is if we go back in, uh, going back to that rotation, I could actually put in here 360. And everything appears the same because it's rotated 360. But when we do the morph, we actually get a spinning effect. So that's quite nice. So you can see there's lots and lots of different things you can do with morph when you start to play about with it. Um, next, I want to show you how you can do more of a transformation like I was talking about. So I'm going to go across to our final uh, uh, scene here. So what I want to do is replace that with a, a happier image. So I'm going to go into images, and this time I'm going to search for happy. And here we've got a happy version of that user. So I'm going to bring that one in. And I'm going to place that one on top of the other one. OK. So what I want to do now is to morph from one to the other. So I need to move this one right to the end. And I need to go into Image Properties. So again, I'm going to choose Morph. And I've got quite a few images available now because I'm right at the end of the scribe. But I want to go back, right back to the beginning and choose this one. And I think about a second and a half should do it. This will actually be the final image. So I'm actually going to increase the pause time at the end here. So I can just show you that effect. If I press play from here, this time we get this transformation effect. So to, to do that properly, I just need to set the camera on that image. So if I make sure I'm on the same uh, camera position as the previous image, go back to this one and set camera, then there'll be no movement from at this point. OK, so those are some various different types of uh, uh, morphing effects. As I say, there's all sorts of things you can do, but that gives you some examples to get started with. What I want to show you uh, now is how to use different hands. Um, and you saw Joe uh, use some, saw some hands that would, you know, maybe we needed to change. So I'll go back and change them in a minute. First of all, I want to show you how you can change the default hand. So up on the toolbar at the top, we've got this hand option. If I click on this, this is going to change the default hand for the whole scribe. So in here we've got lots and lots of different hands. We've got different moving hands, we've got pens that write by themselves, we've got eraser hands, lots of different ones to choose from. So as a default hand, I'm going to choose this one here holding a pen. So that looks quite nice. So now when I start to play the scribe from the start, you'll see we're now using this different hand. OK, um, we can then change hands on specific elements. So that's the default hand. But for example, for this text here, maybe rather than have a pen, I want to have some sort of highlighter. So I can go into the properties for this text, and there's a hand down here as well. So if I click on this, again, I've got the same uh, option with all these different hands. In this case, maybe I could choose this highlighter. And then I can do that for the next bit of text as well. The same hand for both bits of text. OK, so then moving through, uh, we had this move in here. So I can show you a different move in hand. So if I go into this one, again, we've got the hands. So rather than to use the default hand, maybe I want to use this 
move in hand here. Uh, we'll, you'll see all of these in just a minute. Um, we also had this issue with this scribble out feature. So if I just play that again, remember we had a pen coming on to draw it. It's now the default hand, but it's still a pen. So I'll go in and this time, again, I'm gonna change hands for this element only. And this time we want to choose an eraser. So you can see I'm choosing hands that kind of go together. So now we have an eraser being used. So that's gonna look a lot better. And the last one, remember this card coming in, we had again a hand bring it in, the default, this move changed to the default hand. So what I wanna do is go in, in this case, I'm gonna choose no hand. So sometimes you just want things to be drawn or brought in uh, all by themselves. So we just choose the no hand option here. Okay, so we've got lots of different hands in there now and you'll see all that when I play it through in just a minute. Before I do that, I'm just gonna show you how you can also change the background. So that's this paper icon up here. So in here, we've got different background effects and also we can choose different colors. So for example, if I choose a gray color here and this one, then you get kind of a blackboard effect. Okay, there's a problem over here I need to sort out, but you can see the background there is kind of like a blackboard. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is choose a much lighter color and I'm gonna choose this sort of paper effect here. So that's quite nice. But yeah, you can see that the scribble out is no, no longer the correct color. So if I highlight that, I can show you how to fix that. So I'm gonna go into the properties for this and what I need to do is change from full color to silhouette and now I can change the color and I can choose the same color as the background so then that effect is uh, as we'd expect it to be. Okay, so that's completed the different parts of the scribe. What I'm gonna do is play that back um, and I'm gonna sh so you can see the whole thing with all those different effects that we've just added in. So that's the completed scribe, um, and actually, that's actually the end of this tutorial, and in fact it's the end of the core series. So I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. If you need any further help uh, at this stage, then I recommend you go to our help page, which is videoscribe.co slash help, and there you'll find links to all our other tutorials, and also lots of tips and useful advice on how to really get the best out of Videoscribe.